Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on Our News. A top union official is blasting recent actions taken by the Attorney General in the Sandals matter. That story straight ahead. A community activist and talk show host responds to Urker's plan to crack down on broadcasters. That story straight ahead. Former Cabinet Minister Philip Galanis says the results of that public domain poll should be a concern to the Progressive Liberal Party. That story straight ahead. Plus, the House of Assembly's Committee on Privilege to hold its first public hearing soon. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina McNeil. Topping news tonight, Trade Union Congress President Obi Ferguson says he was completely caught off guard by the revelation that Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson put a stop to the private prosecution of two Sandals managers last month. Ferguson says despite meeting with the AG and Prime Minister Perry Christie several times after the Nole prosequi was filed, they never informed the union of the AG's decision. Jasmine Brown has the story. Jasmine? That's right, Christina. Ferguson says the actions taken by the Attorney General blindsided the union. We were shocked. On August 15th, the same day that Sandals Royal Bahamian made more than 600 workers redundant, Maynard Gibson filed a nolly prosequi, stopping a private prosecution against the top management of the resort. That's five days after Sandals General Manager Gary Williams and Financial Controller Ronnie Mirza were charged with failing or refusing to enter into contract negotiations with the Bahamas Hotel Maintenance and Allied Workers Union, intimidating three workers and union officials and firing them unlawfully. Ferguson says he didn't find out until yesterday. That's by accident. The, the, the Attorney General Office never contacted my office to advise me of the situation. Ferguson says he was completely caught off guard, especially since he had met with the AG and Prime Minister after it was filed. And at no time did the PM indicate to us that the government intended to do what they did. We met with the AG and she was in support of the union taking the application out on the private prosecution. Ferguson questioned why Maynard Gibson never intervened to stop prosecution against Sandals workers charged with blocking access to Sandals Royal Bahamian Resort. The five other workers who were charged, the government saw fit not to annul those, but to annul the two foreigners and indeed the hotel. So we as a movement, the labor movement, we, we, we take this very seriously. He also questioned whether the government represents the interests of Bahamians or foreigners. As for what the union intends to do now. The workers are going to react. I can assure you the workers will react. The trade unions will react to this. It's poor, it's in bad taste, it's a question of trust, because why would we be dealing with the government? Now, Ferguson says the matter will not end here as he plans on consulting other union leaders. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Jasmine. Well, Long Island MP and FNM Shadow Minister for Labor, Loretta Butler Turner, says the AG's decision to file that Nole prosequi is a blow to all Bahamian workers. The government um, is not serving the needs of the people. It seems to be that the government is using a very heavy hand in overriding the judiciary. Butler Turner says while there has been no explanation as to why Maynard Gibson stopped the private prosecution, she finds it suspicious. It appears to me that justice has not been served, will not be served, and neither will there be any answers. She says this matter is something all Bahamians should be concerned about. The workers of the Bahamas need to take heed, uh, in my estimation, of what the government and the Attorney General has actually done. Well, following a pledge by the Utilities Regulation and Competition Authority to crack down on broadcasters due to an increase in breaches related to the standards of taste and decency, host of the Freedom March talk show Rodney Monker and his attorney Wayne Monroe have accused IRCA of attempting to stifle freedom of speech. Simone Davis reports. 
During a press conference at Monroe & Associates this afternoon, attorney Wayne Monroe announced that he would defend Moncur if his freedom is challenged. Monroe was referring to a recent letter from IRCA, which expressed concern over the content in Moncur's talk show. IRCA made a demand for Mr. to uh, Monca's programming during the week of the 5th to the 9th of September. Uh, Mr. Monca thought through his mind as to who exactly did he cost in that time period. And that's how he describes it. Uh, there's no profanity in it. Over the weekend, Erka noted that there has been an increase in the broadcasting of content regulation issued by Erka on March 2nd, 2012. And as a result, the authority will increase the monitoring of content on FM radio stations. Monroe says since Erka has demanded copies of Monker's show during that one week period, he is left to question why isn't the authority recording content so that it can be better monitored. Monroe says he believes Erka's recent announcement just shows that the company is not doing its job. That if Erka is doing its job, I do not understand why they are not capturing themselves all broadcasting. I, they seem to be telling us that they don't have a clue what they are supposed to be doing. Because if they are they're asking the radio station for the content, then you could edit whatever you like. That seems to suggest that they may be kind of clueless and not realize that they should be recording for themselves and storing for a designated period all programming that they are responsible for regulating. However, Monker asserted that despite attempts to stifle his freedom of speech, nothing will deter him from speaking his mind. I am 59 years old. I'm a middle-aged citizen. I have two grandchildren. I've always been responsible, always. And there are people who have decided that they want to label me because I wouldn't act according to their script. And I'm a man who is extremely mystical. Erka also encouraged members of the public who may hear and view content that may breach the code to submit a written complaint to Erka. Reporting for our news, I'm Simone Davis. In other news, the results of a recently published public domain poll could spell disaster for the Progressive Liberal Party in the next general election if it doesn't address the problems and soon. This according to former PLP Cabinet Minister Philip Galanis, who noted the poll showed low support for the government and Prime Minister Perry Christie. Dana Smith reports. Galana said the poll should serve as a wake-up call to the Progressive Liberal Party because if it continues on the path it's on now, it could lose the next general election. That's why polling is done. One, to take the test, to take the temperature of the po political environment and to determine whether or not some adjustments need to be made. The nationwide poll, which was conducted last month, found low voter support for political parties, especially the PLP. Only 14 percent of respondents said they would vote for the party if an election were called tomorrow. And researchers noted Bahamians are dissatisfied with this Christie administration. If the PLP continues on the path that it has been on for the next year or less than a year that we have to go and these perceptions persist, then it will will run the serious risk of losing the election. Among the poll's findings, 45% of respondents associate the PLP as a party that is aligned with foreign interests. It follows concern among some over Chinese influence in the country and criticisms from the opposition that this administration is more concerned with foreigners than its own citizens. Galanis said this point is one of the most disconcerting. The PLP has always been a grassroots nationalist party that are always was seen to be and always supported the persons the, the, who the, the less fortunate in our society, uh, always seen to be the party that pushed for bahamianization. And even in the last elections, 
uh, promised that they'd put Bahamians first. The poll also pointed to a staggering lack of support among youth for the PLP. 68% of voters between the ages of 18 and 34 said they have no intention of voting for the PLP. Among those who chose the PLP as their first choice, only 12% of them were voters between the ages of 18 and 34. In addition to the perception that the PLP has now become a party of foreign interest, that is perhaps, that, that I'd, I'd rate that as the second most critically important finding in this poll. The most important finding in this poll is the shift in the young, young, young people. When you get a poll result indicating that a vast number of young persons have indicated that they're not going to support the PLP, again, that ought to be a wake-up call for the PLP to try to understand why is it that we become so disconnected from our young people. I think that's critically important. Reporting for our news, I'm Dana Smith. Thanks, Dana. Still to come on our news. What Dr. Dwayne Sands has to say about Dr. Andre Rollins in the upcoming general election, that's coming up straight ahead. But first, we'll tell you when the Committee on Privilege is expected to hold its first public hearing and why graduation at public schools across the country will be different this school year. That's coming up when our news returns.